So originally I was going to make a video talking about Boy Scouts because I was a Boy Scout, but then as I was writing the script I thought about all the fun things I did as a Cub Scout. So here we are. Cub Scouts is something you can do before you're old enough to be a Boy Scout. It's not required to do Cub Scouts to be a Boy Scout. It's just if you're up to it or if your parents signed you up, you can do it. Now you're already pretty young when you can start doing Boy Scouts. It's why it's called Boy Scouts, not Man scouts. You can start doing Cub Scouts when you're seven. At what point does it just become babysitting in uniform? So all you people watching over the age of seven, let me tell you what you missed out on. Unlike Boy Scouts that wear a tan uniform, Cub Scouts wear a dark blue uniform. Now there are four ranks to the Cub Scouts. There were some requirements you had to do to go up the ranks, but if you went to the meetings every week, you'd be fine. You didn't have to do anything on your own time. And even if you did all the requirements in the rank, you still had to be in the rank for at least a year. So basically the ranks were based on your age. When you were seven years old in first grade, you were a tiger scout. The second graders were the wolf scouts, the third graders were the bear scouts, and the fourth graders, aka the really cool ones because you're the oldest. Actually, before I tell you, just guess what the mascot for the fourth and final rank of Cub Scouts is. Leave your guesses in the comment box below. Just kidding, don't do that. I don't care. We have a tiger, a wolf, and a bear. <laughs> that rhymed. What animal is cooler than all three of those? I'll tell you. Nothing. And that was the mascot. There was no mascot. Welcome to the real world, fourth graders. There's no such thing as cartoon anthropomorphic animals. <clears throat> so if you did guess anything in the comments, you were wrong. I told you not to guess. The fourth and final rank of Cub Scouts was called Weebelos. weeb -alos. Very fitting name. It goes Tiger, Wolf, Bear, Weebelos? What kind of animal is that? Apparently it's supposed to stand for We Be Loyal Scouts, cause we talk like pirates. Don't worry Cub Scouts, I'll make you a mascot for the Weebelos. Here, it's a made up animal for a made up word. Use it however you like. The Wikipedia page also talked about a bobcat badge, but I don't remember doing that, so that's whatever, it's not important. I can't even remember what we did as Cub Scouts. We would just meet at some person's house, I think it was one of the kids' moms moms and she just had some activity for us to do outside and we would just play. My mom told me that she was my scout leader for a year, but I don't remember that. I do remember we talked about bike safety and I remember I fell off my bike a lot. I still got the award though. Each rank had a handbook that said what activities you would do, and I looked on Google for pictures of the handbook, and I found these books with gritty, serious, tough covers, and I was shocked because the handbooks I grew up with had the mascots on them, and I liked it. The old books were cute and had pictures. You're not trying to get rid of the mascots, are you, Cub Scouts? I think it's funny that each mascot gets progressively unhealthier, which is why my Weebelow mascot looks the way it does. And I think I might be suppressing this memory, but every time we went up a rank, there would be this award ceremony thrown by the leaders, and I think we metaphorically drank the blood of the mascot. I mean, it was really just fruit juice, but... Hello. Uh, hey TJ. Hey, James. Do you remember Cub Scouts? Yeah. Um, did we, whenever we went up the ranks, did we metaphorically drink the blood of the mascot? Uh, I think that's just something our leaders did. Like, some leaders chose to do it, and ours did, but I don't think everyone did it. Oh, we had weird leaders. Yeah, I guess we did. Okay, bye, TJ. So another thing we did as Cub Scouts was go to this thing called Cub Scout Day Camp. I don't know if it was just an Arizona thing, but I hated it. Cub Scout Day Camp took camping and made it unfun. And surprisingly, even as a seven and eight year old, I loved camping. Really, Jane? Someone who sits in front of the computer all day drawing Pokemon? You like toughing it out and sleeping in the woods? Yes, oh yes. If you've never been camping, get on that. I'm talking about real camping though, not this day camp. Cub Scout day camp was during the summer, an Arizona summer. And we would get up super early, like eight o'clock, eat breakfast at home, and then you and your whole troop carpooled for about two hours to camp. There were a bunch of other Cub Scout troops that met there too. It was a pretty big thing. You were supposed to pack your own lunch, and all the other boys had really cool lunches, like Lunchables and Go-Gurts and, ironically, Suabway. I was jealous of kids with Suabway sandwiches, and all my mom packed me was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on wheat bread. So before the day even starts, I'm 
I'm already in a bad mood. You start the day sitting in this big auditorium, but it's outside. The leaders would tell you to drink lots of water, and they actually gave all the troops a bag of water balloons, and they wanted us to throw them at each other because that would keep us moist and not die of heat stroke. But water balloons are stupid because 90% of the time they don't even break on impact. You're just beating some poor kid to death with a bag of water. Then you would separate into your troop, and there was a rotation of activities for you to do all day. We ate dinner, and then we went back to the auditorium, and some of the leaders put on a play. I mean, it was a pretty dumb play, but I was invested in the story. But then at 10 p.m., you went home. You didn't even get to sleep in a tent. Sleeping in a tent is one of the most fun things about camping. And also, the whole time, we didn't get a campfire because it's dangerous to have fire around 7 to 10 year olds or something. But they did let us do archery, because that's safe. Then the next day, you went back and you did it all over again. And then you would do it for a third day, too. So three days of this. Three days of people throwing water balloons at you, and you can't get them back because you have a weak throwing arm. And you're probably wondering, James, what's with all the complaining? This sounds like fun. I mean, sure, other kids probably had fun. I might have been a little dramatic as an eight-year-old. One time on the second day of camping, I was clumsy and I kept falling off the rocks that I was climbing on, and I kept getting all these scrapes and bruises and they really hurt. And then we went swimming, that was one of the activities, there was a swimming pool. But just being the little punk kid that I was, I was like, no, I don't want to go swimming. So they made me sit off to the side and they said I couldn't swim. But then later I was like, I want to go swimming now. After you swam, the leaders told you to check your shoes for scorpions, and I remember I didn't check because I hated everyone. And you know the play the leaders put on at the end of the day? It was split up into three parts, one part for each day. So it was left on a cliffhanger. I wanted to go see it, but everyone else in the troop wanted to play with water balloons. And I never found out how the play ended. The next morning when I was supposed to leave for the third day, I told my mom that I didn't want to go and she had to tell the carpool that her son didn't want to go because he's a huge puss. And then afterwards when they were handing out the awards, I didn't get a single award because I didn't go the third day. So I didn't finish any of the activities. And then I never went back to Cub Scout Day Camp since. And that's why I hated it.